So I'm, according to the docket, supposed to talk to you about diversity, inclusion, and equity. And I have to start with a confession that I have a bit of a frustration that I've been living for the last several years, which is when I try to explain what seems to be a simple word, like diversity or inclusion, to an audience on the internet, in writing, people think I'm crazy. So I'm gonna start by saying that we're not ready to learn about diversity, inclusion, and equity, and this is what you're going to run into everywhere you go. That's the point in this fight where we are. To understand diversity, inclusion, and equity, you have to understand where those ideas are coming from. I uh, realize there's a bit of chutzpah involved in this room saying that ideas have consequences. But they do, that's true. And the set of ideas that stands behind diversity, inclusion, and equity makes those words not mean, with maybe the exception of equity, what you think they mean. And if you don't understand that, you're not ready to talk about it. I recently gave a talk in front of a group of people, conservatives, and at the end, a lady raised her hand and said, I don't wanna to have to be smarter. I don't wanna to have to read another book. I don't wanna to have to understand, I just wanna tell these people they're wrong because I know I'm right and I know they're wrong. And I had a picture in my mind of somebody, you know, the, the Nazis bombing London and somebody saying, I don't wanna know what an airplane is, I don't wanna build an anti-aircraft gun, I just want them to stop. You've got to understand where these ideas come from and I have dedicated the last, ever since the whole uh, fake paper dog humping thing, two years of my life or thereabouts, that was just over two years ago that came out, to helping people understand the ideology and in fact the worldview in which these ideas have arisen. And it's not what your worldview is, whether you are Christian, whether you are secular, whether you are Muslim, whether you are an old school Marxist, it is not the way you think about the world. Those people all believe in objective truth. This is a very different fight. These ideas are concerned with one and one only organizational principle of society, which is systemic power. If you don't understand these ideas and all of the other ideas, that the woke movement uses in terms of systemic power, you don't understand the ideas at all. And what's going to happen is you're gonna get played. And you're gonna get played again, and you're gonna get played again, and you're gonna get played again, and you're gonna say fun words like, ah, you know, they, they can't mean that. They must mean this more reasonable thing. And I'm gonna tell you that part of you getting played is them depending on you to translate their ideas back into liberalese. The way that people that believe in objective truth, fairness, correspondence to reality would understand those ideas. People who do not believe that everything in the world comes down to systemic power and its operations. So I have to walk you through a little bit of history to get you ready, and we will probably spend a lot less time talking about diversity, inclusion, and equity than you may have feared. My concern is, uh, is doing away with whiteness. Whiteness is a form of racial oppression, sure. The suggestion is that it is somehow possible to separate whiteness from oppression, and it is not. There can be no white race without the phenomenon of white supremacy. If you abolish slavery, you abolish slaveholders. In the same way, if you abolish racial oppression, you do away with whiteness. Treason to whiteness is loyalty to humanity. Your views are, are fairly well received in academia. Legi yes, they're legitimate, not to say that everyone agrees, but sure. I could not point to any examples where it has provoked political censorship. A whiteness is an identity that arises entirely out of oppression. Whiteness is not a culture, it's not a religion, it's not a language, it's simply an oppressive social category. Blackness is an identity that can be plausibly argued. Black studies is the study of a people that has formed itself in resistance to its oppression.
The task is to bring this minority together in such a way that it makes it impossible for the legacy of whiteness to continue to reproduce itself. Why should we expect anything else from a country that's built its success on the enslavement of non-white people? It's that continuous cycle of racism that explains where we are now. Why does the UK acknowledge the sacrifice of people killed in wars, but not the spilled blood of black people? If the UK took our oppression seriously, then people like me who call out racism would be listened to rather than ridiculed or threatened with death. If white people want to see an improvement for people of colour, they need to understand that racism is not learned, it's inherited, and either consciously or unconsciously passed down through privilege. The uncomfortable truth is that the white race is the most violent and oppressive force of nature on earth. My worry is that whatever governments do to tinker with institutional racism, it is so ingrained in the fabric of British society that it is too late to do anything about it.